Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. This is Sander from Emergen RC. Hi. And this is Alex. Hey guys. And today we're going to be showing you how to set up the optimum setup for FPV and your RC link. And why is that important, Sander? RC links and, and FPV setups are often not uh, configured uh, properly. Okay. So we're going to basically walk you through by looking at your uh, first aid kit, okay. how to install everything properly and uh, get up and running quickly. Okay. Not, only, not only how to hook it up, but also placement. That's really important, right? Yes. For various reasons. We're going to go over that today. I guess the, the first thing to start with would be a cable harness. What we have here is just your, your basic configuration for uh, for a cable harness. Okay. What you would typically do if you buy a speed controller, it doesn't come with any of the connectors. And uh, obviously the first thing you need to do is put on your favorite battery connector. Okay. And here we're using the XC60. Um, if you want to start using our gear, and especially the uh, 600 milliwatt transmitter, it comes with a cable, this one. I've already spliced it in, because you're going to be soldering that connector anyway, so you might as well solder a connector for the, uh, for the battery lead for the transmitter at the same time. And that's the truest form. You don't want to go off your balance connector. You can go right off of here. That way, when you plug it, it's automatically plugged in. And when you unplug it, you don't forget to unplug yeah. your, uh, your transmitter and drain your battery. Exactly. So, yeah, so basically just solder your power cable for your ESC and the power cable for this onto the XT60 yeah. or whatever battery connector right. you're using. And I would recommend soldering it as close to the XT60 uh, connector as possible, because sure. if you do it further down the line, you're also picking up noise from the ESC. And that's really not what you want. This is the transmitter, and, and the best placement for that is actually a little spaced out from the receiver. Okay. So what we've done here, we made a little sharpie uh, line out for the uh, for the position. Nice. And this is basically going to go here. And uh, if you then wire this in as you normally would, so the motor would go on the motor mount, you okay. see will fit here. Yes. And the battery obviously goes up front. Okay. Now there's one really cool thing here is uh, anytime you have a connector, you have a point of failure. Uh, so what we did here is we actually started this hard. Uh, reason being is if you have a bolt connector and say you're you're pulling this battery connector to plug in your batteries, you're slowly loosening these guys here and you have a chance of a failure. So the more soldering you do, and we have some really good videos on how to solder, mm -hmm. and we'll have those linked down below. So if you never soldered before, it's a uh, it's a very useful tool. It's a very useful tool. And if you've been a plug and play plug and play guy from this point on, yes. that's okay, and that's a great way to start and yeah. get into it. But if you're looking, especially when you're flying at a place like this, and you're you're doing long range, yes. and you have an expensive setup, you want to save your gear, so you want to eliminate all failure points yeah, if possible. Definitely. Absolutely. The other thing you want to take into consideration, I mean, if you you're launching that wing and it crashes, for example stuff gets shifted around and you risk basically un unplugging yeah. one of these connectors and the next launch you do somewhere during the flight the motor just disconnects and you're you're yeah. gliding and yeah how do you get back home yeah when you're pulling high g maneuvers that stuff tends to happen. for example now one yep. thing i do like about your connectors is you can only put them in one way and they have a tang on them. they have a little retaining top and they're keyed so you can't put them in the wrong way around so that's it and they don't pull out again yes so you know you have a good secure connection so what are the main components you got your, your main setup for your rc here Okay, and you got your receiver. Now there's something special you do with your receiver, so you don't have all this wire and all this energy transferring all over your wing and muddying up your RC link and your FPV link. Yeah, well especially if you're building larger builds with longer wire runs, you wanna make sure that the power distribution is something you look at. If this is out here on the wing like that, you can have pretty short cable runs, but if you have a larger build and you put it all the way out here, for example, yes. on a larger wing, these cables become excessively long. Because obviously if you wanna control the servo on the other this, side of the, the wing. The servo has to travel all the yep. way over to here, uh, mm -hmm. and the power has to travel all the way over to here. Yep. So, so what's better? What, what's the better option? Ideally what you want to do is start here from where the power originates. Okay. So what you do, you shoulder, shoulder a, a wire harness for, uh, for the cables, okay. for the power, route them all the way through the servo directly, and just route the servo, or uh, the signal wires to the uh, to the receiver, and a single power wire. So, so your power comes from the BEC, Yep. and uh, so you have your power coming here, and then all you have is your signal wires going to your servos. And exactly, your yeah, okay. that's the way you do it. Nice. And the other thing you can do while you're at it is, is twist the cables so they have less pickup of RF and other interference. That causes the interference to actually collapse down on itself, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. And speaking of servos too, you mentioned earlier that uh, analog aren't always the, the, the bad servos. And yeah. in, in the case of FPV, actually analog work pretty well. Why, why is that? Yeah. Well, I mean, digital servos, they will, will strain and, and give give their, their, their maximum in order to maintain their position. And by doing that, they will consume a lot more power than your analog servo. They're always running at a solid amperage, yep. right? Yep. Whether they're neutral, not load, or load, they have an amperage that's always being drawn. Yeah, and because they're digital, I mean, they, they spew out a lot more noise in terms of, of, um, of RF and everything. This is nice because on a small build like this, like yeah. the Versa, you don't really need to use too many extensions. Yes. Maybe one or two servo extensions, but other than that, the cables that it comes with should be sufficient. So we got the video transmitter there, our UHF receiver there. Yep. Um, what's next? Well, basically what you can do now, you can hook this in. So this is your, your power for your, uh, for your video okay. transmitter. This stays here, and this little signal and power wire for the receiver goes in here. So this basically is, is now configured. The only thing you now need to do is hook up the servos 
Obviously this one just loops back and goes in here. And for this one, you just need a little servo uh, cable extension. Servo extension. With a 5.8, this is plenty of distance between the two to get yeah. really good performance. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily go wing tip to wing tip. No. And the other thing you'll notice is we put the components in front of the wing spar. Yes. So in terms of the center of gravity, you, you get a little bit more weight in the front. Yeah. Here's the CG line is roughly right here. So you're, you're not hindering. If you put them back here, you got to put a lot of energy and a lot of weight up front. Yep. So basically, a longer version of this cable would go from this servo all the way to the receiver, and that way that's done. Now, as far as what you're talking about with, with splicing, how would someone uh, splice it so they have their power centralized and they're only running their servos? Right. Well, I mean, there's, there's several ways you can do that. If, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with soldering, obviously, uh, if you can do this, you can also do the servo splicing here. Okay. So you just take the, uh, the power wire, splice those out to the servos, and then just run the, the signal wires out to the, uh, to the receiver from the servos. What can you fly distance wise? Well, right now you're kind of restricted by the video range because if you use, for example, a pair of these, uh, these Fast Shark goggles. Yes. I mean, what I have fitted on here is our, uh, is our patch antenna, which we co developed with Fast Shark. Okay. Um, this will give you at least two to three miles of range. Two to three miles. And if, if you have flat land without uh, mountains and everything, you can even go further than that. I have okay. guys flying out to five, six, seven miles wow. easy. Okay. So it, it's all within the realm of possibility. Yes. But it obviously depends on how clean you set this up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this is a uh, Fat Shark camera, right? Yeah, that's correct. Right. Now this is different than a typical uh, security camera. Yes. Yeah. This is actually tuned for FPV flight. Yeah, it actually says so on the sticker, and it, 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 it's not just printed on there to sell the thing. It's actually been been tuned to uh, to offer you the, the right uh, dynamic range, dynamic range okay. and contrast and all that, so you can you can fly in different conditions. So that that means is when you have the beautiful bright sky and you have the dark ground, you're not losing one or the other. Yep. Yeah. You're going to be able to see the whole entire yep. thing. Especially like sunset and those high contrast times of the day where yes, exactly. the lights and dark. And the neat thing about this is this is actually plug and play, and we, we were just talking about soldering is good. The key components you want to solder, but plug and play is so important because when you get into the FPV experience, you want to constantly uh, grow. Yep. I mean, you want to get more and more features. And one thing up until the past, that was very hard to do because you didn't know what was compatible. You had voltage issues. You know, not everything was good. Everything with this is plug and play. So once you get your initial system set up, it's not going to be outdated. It will constantly grow with you. So uh, say this board camera here, this is not a matter of soldering or running voltage regulators. No, nope, it's actually it's the same connector we feature so in all our gear. It plugs in like that. So it's the same locking connector. Once it's in, it's never going to come out unless you really pull the cables and out. This cable is special. This is shielded, right? Yeah, it's a shielded cable. So okay. this basically, you can route through your battery bay or around your EC. It's not going to be affected by any of the... But normally, uh, this would be a big no-no. Crossing over two powers yeah. would be a big no-no. Cause noise when you change your throttle, you'd feel it. Yep. And stuff, since this is shielded. And uh, this is all very important stuff. If you don't have the ability to, say, shield some of your electronics, a ferric core, or twisting it, those are all really important things to do. So say you still want to record and you want to have that experience. Uh, that's where the GoPro is going to come in, right? Yeah. So basically, if you have this, this uh, FPV camera fitted there, yeah. you can still fit the GoPro right next to, next to it to get the same field of view, you, the same you angle. You just offset it a little bit, right? Yeah. So the GoPro would virtually mount right here. Yeah, with the lenses as close together as you can. Exactly. And, and we also have this FT Elements. This is made for the Kraken, but an FT Elements simple uh, camera mount that goes along with the battery mount that's really yep. good for these. And that'll versions. actually work with a GoPro uh, 2, yep. 3, or yep. a Mobius. Yep, GoPro 2, GoPro 3, or turn it sideways and you can mount your Mobius there. So you have all these different options. Just there a simple recording. Velcro strap and it exactly. holds it nice and secure. And mount them next to each other, like you said, with the lens as close as possible. Yep. And now you can record your experience, but if this guy shuts down, you're not going to be flying blind. Now, as you're growing and everything, and say you're flying this wing, you're having a good experience and you want to upgrade, you want to know how far away from home mm -hmm. you are. Yep. So you can go up to an OSD, which is an on-screen display, right? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Well, basically what that gives you is all the vital information you need to be able to monitor your battery, yeah. how far out you are, how high up you are, yeah. uh, where home is, which obviously is very important if yes. you want to come back. Yes. Um, so the Easy OSD is something that plugs straight into a standard configuration like this. You don't need the solder, you don't, do, you don't need to do anything. It just basically you buy the Easy OSD and all the connectors are compatible. Great. So all the FPV gear is plug and play. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. That's a really nice feature. So I have here the on the, the Easy OSD on screen display and then this is the Easy OSD current sensor. Yeah, correctly. So basically what this does, this gives you all the information about your battery status. So it monitors the battery, it makes sure that it basically gives you accurate information on uh, the usage of the battery and all that. What I love the most is it actually gives you a million countdown. So if you have a 2200 milliamp battery in there, it actually says you've used so many milliamps of battery. Yep. That's a really good way of telling because oftentimes doing voltages in my head, what does 10.7 mean as compared to 10.6? There's a huge difference because the LiPo battery drops like this. Yep. So so you'll have 11.1, 11.1, everything's looking 
looking good and yeah. you know, right down. Exactly. Well, this is giving the actual countdown, so you have a really good, but you also have your voltage too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have all the important stuff you need, but nothing yeah. that you don't. Yeah, and just to make it clear, this is all showing up on your goggles. Yeah. In your screen, it, it, it feels like you're a fighter pilot. I was actually tuned into you guys earlier, and it shows it shows everything. Right. It shows everything you need to know. It shows your battery. It shows you which direction you're going, how to get back home. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. all in your goggles. Yeah, and the good thing is, I mean, uh, especially if you're starting up, uh, you're probably going to be overwhelmed by the perspective and you're flying around. EasyOZ allows you to set certain alarms. For example, you can set an alarm for distance. So if you're, for example, flying out to, I don't know, 200 meters yeah. or uh, a few hundred feet, yeah. you can set that as a threshold. So once you reach that distance, it'll come up with an alarm so you know when to turn around. Yeah. The same applies to distance, uh, battery voltage, battery capacity. So yeah. for example, if you want to fly out with your 2200 milliamp hour pack, yeah. And you want to basically set a fail safe point at uh, half, wanna, to half pack. So you, you can, want half pack to go yeah. home. Yeah. So you set the alarm at 1100, and then it starts flashing an alarm at that point. So you know, hey, I got to go turn back, because otherwise I'm not going to make it. To put this in, it's so easy, because you simply can just disconnect this, right? Yep. Run it through the OSD. Yep. Yeah. And that's, so this one will go that's into the, uh, the top uh, the top connector. Flip it open. Oh, right yeah. here? It's the top connector. Top connector. So this goes in here. And then obviously, the video transmitter wants a signal for, back from the, uh, from the OSD. So you take this cable. Just a little extension there. Yeah. And that goes in here. Yep. And, and then this guy plugs into here. This guy plugs into here. And now this becomes your battery connector. So your, your 2200 milliamp hour pack just plugs straight in here. Nice. And, and as far as placement, you want to kind of keep this away from the receiver though still. So uh, from the transmitter, yeah. From the transmitter. So you're going to want this somewhere over here. Yeah. And then you're going to want this situated by somewhere up like this. Exactly. And it also says on the sticker, other side to sky, because obviously the GPS receiver is, is here. It needs to face up. It needs to face up. Okay. But you can still, if, for example, if you want to make a lid here, which falls over it, nice. you want to mount it underneath, that's just fine. Just don't cover it with anything metallic. Okay. Okay, so, so just to make it clear, you're taking the signal from the camera, so your image is coming here into this OSD, yes. into the current sensor, into the video transmitter to your goggles. Yeah, so the easy OSD basically becomes the, the, the main central hub of everything. Okay. It will give you all the information required. So it's actually receiving the data from the current sensor. Yeah. And it's, it's compiling you. everything. That's okay. the transmitter to be sent out. Yeah, exactly. So it's overlaying it over your video. Yeah. And a good bit, I mean, if you don't want to be looking at that info, you could just turn it off. There, you just program a switch on your radio, nice. you switch off the OSD, and then you basically just get the standard image you'll get from and just using a camera. The OSD has so many key benefits for safety, for function and everything. We're going to do a whole other episode, but I do like the fact that you have your buttons. You have a simple USB port where you can yep. flash it and you have new firmware dates coming out for free all the time. Um, so that's fantastic. Now, the biggest thing about this, while we're really stressing, we want you to be able to grow in the hobby, but also, the better you optimize this, the better RC link, you don't have to be a pilot that flies out five miles. Nope. Just because you have that range, if you can get good, clear signal of five miles, most likely you're gonna have amazing experience close in, and that's where most, most of the fun and is And a at. safe experience, too, yes. which is the most important part. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, especially with the easy UHF. I mean, the, the link budget, which means the, the maximum distance you have available, Yeah. You're really gonna upgrade by, by buying something like this because the, the standard remotes are not basically designed to go a long range, and this is. So if you're flying yeah. closer in, this is gonna give you a rock solid connection. So it, nice. if you're if you're slaloing through trees or, or diving down low, this will keep on running. Now this this system we talked about. If you fly Spectrum, Futaba, High Tech. This is your receiver. This is just general receiver. Yeah, it's just the same thing. Yeah, this is just for optimum range, but also check your laws in your country. Now, in the UK, they actually have a special ROM version that enables you to fly legally. Yeah, yeah. But that's always correct. check your laws, abide by the laws. Yeah, because this isn't 2.4, it's what, 4? 433. 433, 4, 4, yeah. 433. Yeah. So, so it's you a need little a bit different. Yeah, in the States, you'd need a ham, ham license to operate it. And actually, you were talking about if you were in the UK, you can actually update the firmware yeah. to change it to a, a, a frequency yeah. that's legal. It's actually a free update you can get from our website that will yeah. change that frequency of operation to four, five, nine, nine megahertz. Okay. Yes. And that will allow anybody, even without a ham radio license, to operate that gear. That's awesome. The one thing that we haven't covered yet is obviously there's a, a component that goes with this. Which oh is yeah, on yeah. This isn't going to work with your standard tra transmitter. Yeah. So what do you what do you need to fly with one of these to get that maximum range? Yeah. Well, basically, if you have uh, a Tirana radio, for example, we do a nice little module on this, the back this side is of it. This a JR style module, yep. right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Any, any radio that has a JR module uh, uh, bay, you yes. can fit this in. This becomes your transmitting module. So this transmits on the same frequency as the EasyHF receiver. It's just plug and play then, right? Just plug clips, and play. Clips right in there. Clips yeah. right in there. And it's awesome. It also has a lot of really exciting features like pan and tilt. If you couple it with your fast shark goggles, you can plug it right in the back here. It'll power yep. your fast shark goggles yep. and instantly enable pan and tilt. The standard, actually all fast shark goggles have this, uh, this, this connector here. It's also featured on the uh, on the GR module and also on our larger aluminum box version. Yeah, that's on the back. Yes. Yeah. So there's a single cable going from here to here, which powers and controls the goggles. So 
it then becomes very simple. You go to the field, plug in, plug in, put your goggles on. You're ready to fly. You're ready to fly. That's awesome. And if you don't have a JR module style transmitter, like he said, he has a they have a hard back on the very back that actually mounts to the back of the transmitter, yep. and it can go into virtually any virtually any, any radio. Any radio yeah. at that point. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I think that's a great recap. Friends, I strongly encourage you, placement is everything. We'll talk about tuning later, yep. uh, but placement of your electronics can give you a world of difference in performance and some simple practices will give you safety, reliability, and the best experience. All right, we want to thank uh, Immersion RC for sponsoring this episode. And that's actually you, Sander, and your whole team. They're all sitting back there watching. Amazing group of guys to travel with. And where did you bring us here? This is actually, amazing. Yeah, we're actually, we're in France. We're in, in the French Alps. And if you look behind us. Those that, are the French Alps. Yep, yeah, that's where we'll be flying next. Fantastic. So what do you say we get all this stuff secured and take it for a spin? It's a Great. Good idea. And if you guys want to see a pre-configured version of this Versa with all the doors cut in and everything so you can just drop your electronics in the optimum position, let us know. We can make wire harnesses and things like that, make it all really complete, really easy, and give you a great experience. It's cool. a great idea, Josh. All right. All right, let's, let's do it. All right, let's go.